Photoshop is an incredibly powerful editing program. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at five essential edits that you will need to apply to your images many times. One of the edits that we're gonna take a look at is black and white and whether or not you use that will ultimately depend on whether you want to convert your images to mono, but it is an important way of editing. So that is one of the things we're gonna look at. So the first essential edit is using curves. So I'm gonna click on the adjustment layer icon, which is a half white, half black circle at the bottom of the layers panel and select curves. And with editing, it's always good to work non-destructively. So using adjustment layers allows you to go back and make changes at a later date if you need to. And also you can stack several of the same adjustment layer to perform different functions. So with the curves, by creating an S curve, you can increase the contrast. And if we just remove those points there, we can lighten the image by dragging up and to the left or darken by dragging down and to the right. So if I just create an S curve again, we've added a huge amount of contrast there and we can combine that with blending modes as well to get different effects. So for instance, when we boost contrast in this way, we are also increasing saturation. So if I was to change the blending mode from normal to luminosity, we're only affecting the luminosity of the image, not the saturation as well. So you get a much more natural result. And we can also use the opacity slider to control the overall effect. And as I say, we could stack several of those layers together. So we could have one for contrast and one for brightness. So let's just delete this and move on to our next tip. And this is the black and white tip. So we're gonna look at two different ways of converting an image to black and white. So for the first one, we need to make sure that the palette colors are set to black in the foreground and white in the background. And to do that quickly, you can just hit D on the keyboard. If white happens to be in the foreground, you can just press X and you'll see there that we can toggle between the two and just get black onto the left. So the first way that we can convert black and white quickly and easily with a great result is to use a gradient map. And with the palette colors set that way, we automatically get that really nice conversion. So let's just delete this layer and create a black and white adjustment layer. And with the black and white controls, we can actually change the way that different color channels convert to mono. So we get loads of control here and you can really refine the overall conversion to black and white. So let's just delete this layer and then we can move on to our next technique, which is cloning and healing. So I'm gonna create a new empty layer. And then if I go to the healing brush tool, then I can use my left and right square bracket keys. You'll see there that I have a, a soft edged brush. I'm just gonna take the hardness up to about 50% and then using the left square bracket key, make that brush a bit smaller. And then if I hold down Alt or Option on a Mac and left mouse click there, I can sample and then I can remove that boy there. And this is great for removing anything in the image that you don't want, whether that's sensor dust spots or just elements within a scene that aren't working. So here we have some more boys out to see, so we can remove those very quickly and easily. So this is something that you will do on many images and you can just have a look around, just make sure there's no dust spots in the sky. And let's just zoom out and remove that layer so we can move on to our next. And this one is cropping. So we have the crop tool over on the tool panel on the left, or you can press C as the shortcut to get there quickly. And there are lots of different options here. So I am going to keep the rule of thirds grid in place. So once I actually start the crop, I'll get a rule of thirds grid. And as you'll see here, there are lots of different options that we can choose from. But I'm gonna click on the cog here and choose classic mode because this will allow me to see the areas that are being cropped out. 
On the left up here next to the tool icon, we have our ratios. So we can have original ratio, one to one square, four by five, five, seven, two by three, which is four by six and 16 by nine. So if I just drag that guide out and I've gone a bit too far there, we can just move the guide around by dragging around in the center or I can resize this way. If I wanted to change this to an upright, I can just click on these two arrows here and it changes that for me there. So let's go for an eight by 10 and I'm just gonna take that into a landscape and then that could be my crop there. So if I was using the kind of newer crop mode, I wouldn't be able to see what had been cropped out. So that's why I moved on to use classic mode because it just works really nicely in this kind of situation. So cropping is really important because there are lots of different situations where you would need to crop, whether that's to improve the composition or to make your image the correct format for the desired output. So I'm just gonna hit the escape key just so we can come out of there. And the final tip we are gonna go for is changing the image size. So we can do that using the shortcut control Alt and I on a PC, or that would be Command, Option and I on a Mac. Alternatively, we can go up to the main menu to Image, Image Size, and that opens up the Image Size dialog. So when you're reducing the dimensions of an image, just make sure that Resample is checked because that maintains the resolution. If that is unchecked, the sizes just go crazy and you get a result that you don't want. So just make sure resample is checked when you're resizing an image. So next to the dimensions, we can go for percent, pixels, inches, centimeters, millimeters, points, pickers, and columns. So for most people, it's going to be centimeters or inches. So let's go for centimeters. And for the width, I'm going to make it as wide as an A4 piece of paper. And it's not quite as tall, and just by hitting OK, that will change it for me to that size. So let's just go back. Sometimes when you put your images onto your computer, they may be at 72 DPI. So when you open it up, so by default, resample is usually checked. So as I said before, if you're changing the dimensions, you need to make sure that resample is checked. If you're changing resolution, so for web use, resolution doesn't make any difference. It's just important when you're printing. So for printing, 300 pixels per inch is ideal. And when you're changing resolution, you have to make sure that resample is not checked because we want resolution, height and width all to work together. So now we have that size and let's go for 29.7 and then hit OK. There we have a perfectly resized image with the correct resolution. So there are five essential edits in Photoshop for every image.